Hey guys, what's up? Brandon here. I'm doing a seven part series on Tulsa area fishing lakes, the, the big lakes, the big main lakes that surround the Tulsa area. So if you're new to the area or you're on vacation or just want to know more about the, the lakes and what they have to offer, well, in these videos, I want to break down kind of what these lakes have to offer, mainly focusing on bass, but all species, um, kind of how they set up. I'm going to grade them, but, but ultimately just trying to help you figure out which lake best fits your fishing style. Okay, Grand Lake. It is a 47,000 acre lake and is located just northeast of Tulsa. Um, it's the third biggest lake of the, in the state behind Eufaula and Texoma. Um, a very important, the most, probably the most important lake of the state because it hosts a lot of big tournaments and just brings in a lot of revenue for the state um, in a couple different ways. Um, it, and it is the first uh, lake in the chain on the Neo Show. So you, like I, you've seen in the last video, the Gibson, it, uh, there's Grand here, which goes into Hudson, which goes down into Gibson, which is the last lake in the chain. And um, Grand's kind of unique with its, um, because of its dam. So the Pensacola Dam, um, pretty big dam, but it's not very tall, I guess you could say, or deep. Um, so the dam, the conservation pool is at seven, 742 foot and the flood pool is at 755 foot. The top of the dam is at 757 foot. So that's only a 13 foot difference to the flood and 15 to the top of the dam. So it's a lot different than, you know, your keystones where keystone has like a 30 or 40 foot difference. Um, this is only just a little bit, so it just can't hold a lot of water. Okay, so I'm going to break it down in three parts. Uh, the upper, mid, and lower. This is kind of how this lake sets up. So the upper end is the Neosho. It has the Neosho side right here, the biggest side which feeds the lake. And then the Elk River arm here. Um, a little bit smaller of an arm. And then all you know, it goes down to the Silbot Bridge area. So the Neosho, for the most part, in my experience, it's been... It stays muddy or dirty, stained year round. Uh, the elk arm, uh, depending on really both of these, depending on the flow of the lake, the rain, what amounts we've had, and just kind of what's running through it, um, these can get pretty dirty. Um, but at the same time, this upper end of this elk arm can get real clear water up here, like crystal clear. It's not real deep up here, but um, deep enough where you can see you know four to five foot so the mid lake um so you know that's the sailboat down to a little bit west of horse creek which this is horse creek horse creek and honey creek over here are two popular creeks this whole mid lake section is i feel like the the most winning bags come out of this area just in my opinion i feel like it holds the most fishable water because it's always a good mix of water it's not too clear it's not too dirty just holds good water and really, a lot of times, if it gets real muddy, um, because of how these both of these creeks set up, this Horse and um, Honey Creek, um, with the, the river channel flowing through, um, they're kind of protected from that real dirty water. So they sometimes they stay a lot cleaner because they're off the main. Um, nothing's really pushing into them like some of the other creeks. So for the lower end, um, you know, just south of Horse, uh, west of Horse, all the way down to the dam um, is the lower end. Uh, you got two big popular creeks. Uh, probably the one of the most popular is Duck Creek here. And then you have Drowning Creek, which are two big um, creek arms, which uh, down here you just have a lot of, I mean, just little uh, cuts and creek arms off the main lake. Just a little bit of everything. You get a little bit deeper water, typically clear water. You do have a lot more boat traffic down here, like recreational traffic, which uh, can make sometimes fishing throughout the day a little tough, depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, so species on this lake. You have largemouth, spotted bass, catfish, crappie, walleye, which I've never seen a walleye. I've never caught a walleye in this lake. White bass, hybrid bass, and paddlefish. Um... Obviously, largemouth, uh, this lake is full of five-pound largemouth, four- and five-pounders. It's just ridiculous how many of that size fish are in this lake. White bass. This is a really good white bass lake. 
tons of white bass. Um, it's also a big paddlefish lake, spoonbill. It's a lot of spoonbill are caught in this lake. Um, I don't get as big as they do at Keystone, but there's still a lot of spoonbill caught in this lake. <clears throat> and then uh, kind of new to me, I was kind of surprised the hybrid, um, as we'll get into this uh, stocking report in a second. But there's hybrid, lots of hybrids in this lake. They recently started stocking them, which uh, a lot of fishermen aren't really excited about. Uh, they feel like they kind of eat um, a lot of the, the shad that the bass eat, and the bass can't grow as big. So as for the stocking report in this lake, um, as recently, uh, 2020, they stocked uh, the Florida strain, mature Florida strain, and they've kind of stocked Florida strain uh, for the last uh, couple years at least. Um, that 2020 was the first year they did mature um, Florida strain. So they're, you know, trying to grow even bigger bass in this lake than those this, those typical four and five pounders. Um, and then uh, I guess... I was a little bit shocked that I was catching a hybrid the other day in this lake, but um, they are stocking hybrids, like I just said. They um, there's they did um, quite a few in 2020, 2019. Uh, they did a million in 2018, uh, fry. Um, 2017, they did threadfin as well as hybrids, um, which is pretty neat. There's I feel like there's a ton of shad in this lake, so I guess they thought they were a little bit short, so that even more. And then in 2015, they stocked uh, about 2,000 paddlefish. Okay, so I, for tournament data, I tried to pull uh, three um, comparisons, which would be like uh, early season, kind of mid, and then late. So the first one I pulled was in March. Um, and we got, uh, you know, first place finish with 20 pounds, a little 20 pounds. And then all the way down the 10th was a little over 14 pounds. So pretty good bags there. Um, moving on to... Uh, uh, a June tournament, we had a winning weight of 20 pounds, and then the 10th place was at uh, 17, a little over 17, almost 18. So um, pretty good in June. And then we go out into September, a little tougher time. Um, this was a two-day tournament, but um, we had a you know day one weight of 19 pounds, and then down the 10th we had a you know 15 pounds, you know roughly. Uh, so overall, this lake, it pushes out pretty good bags regardless of the time of year you can catch it uh, or you fish it. Um, usually there's guys that can fish this lake and they can catch them regardless of the time, time of year. So, um, but overall, just pretty good bags throughout the year. Okay, so areas to fish. Um, Real quick, and like I said, this lake holds a ton of four and five pounders, um, which makes it a really great lake to fish. But it also can be really tough fishing because of the amount of pressure it gets on this lake. So don't think you can just show up and kind of catch fish. And I feel like five to ten years ago, you could you caught a lot of little ones, and just regardless of when you went, you could catch you know ten fish easily. And I feel like it's it's sometimes you you go you get nothing at all, and sometimes you catch really good ones it's it's just kind of it's it's hit or miss at least in my opinion uh, over the last several years but um some spots to try uh you know depending on where you want to fish at it's like obviously huge tons of areas to fish i haven't hit them all um but if you're if you're like like to flip like i said um or fishing dirty water uh, I suggest getting up and trying this Elk River uh, arm. Um, there's a lot of areas to flip up there. There's going to be a lot less pressure, boat traffic. Um, you can find, kind of find keep some areas to yourself. Um, I don't fish the Neosho side as much just because I just uh, it doesn't offer that much to me. Um, if you just kind of zoom in here, you kind of have to get up the river a little bit before you really get into uh, much at all. Uh, there's a couple creek arms here that i've fished in the past uh, but just not a lot uh, i feel like uh, the elk is even though it's smaller it has a little bit more um, areas that I'm set up a little bit better for what i like to do um you know down here really uh, there's, a, there's a ton you know you got this big channel swing area right here that swings right against these creeks which um is going to make these areas really good for fishing um you know you got your good shallow banks right off the main lake so that's a good area. Wolf Creek's a popular area. Obviously, they release a lot of fish out of that area, so you know there's fish in there. Um, I don't fish this section a whole lot just because it's kind of wide open. Um, there are some little 
creaks up, you know, like obviously stuff like this with his channel swings with, there's going to be a lot of uh, fish in that area. It just, it just sets up well. Um, moving on down, uh, Honey Creek, like I said before, it's a, it's a good area. Uh, lots of pressure. If you're in a tournament, there's lots and lots of pressure in this area though. And it's good reason. There's a lot of fish here. It's a lot of good fishable water, a lot of good docks, a lot of good channel swing banks, um, some obvious stuff. You got a good pinch point with the, the bridge here. Um, but just so you know, there's there's a lot of pressure if you're going to fish this this area just because it's, it's not real big, but it just sets up well because it's getting in that mid-lake area, popular area. Um, and then as you move on down the lake, like I said, Horse Creek area, um, if you just kind of zoom in here, you can see how, how kind of flat it is, how far these uh, contour, these shallow points come way out on this lake, way over here, come way out, you know. So it's just a shallow area, um, a big popular area for biffle bugging, um, hard-headed, dragon, you know, crankbaits, shallow crankbaits in that area. Um, and then, you know, it's just a good area too because it's got this channel swing that pushes a lot of fresh water through this whole area. Um, and it's just a popular creek. Um, also, a lot of these, uh, off these main lakes, these little arms are real good too um, in this mid-lake area. And as you go down the lake, I've probably fished this lake, or the, the lower end the least, just because of the boat traffic. And um, I just don't know as well. I stay kind of in the mid-lakes area, but I do like this drowning creek. I feel like it sets up better for offshore. Um, and just because there's deeper water here, um, there's, it's not as flat as like a horse creek. Um, same with duck, uh, it's not as flat. Um, so there's a lot of more um, steeper transitions uh, and you're getting that cleaner water down here. There, there's just a lot, a, a lot of fishable water on this lake. It all looks good. Um, you just kind of, the biggest thing I see in guys, they, 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 they want to run so many spots because it looks so good. They have so many things marked on their map, but you, you got to be careful because you can get caught on this lake running around and not actually fishing much. So, uh, <clears throat> my advice was, is pick a Creek that looks good to you on the map, or if you, you know, uh, Google map study and stick with it. I mean, you could turn horse Creek into its own little lake or, uh, you know, the honey Creek in its own little lake and stay in there and really fish, fish it out and, uh, keep your line in the water as much as possible. Overall, I give this lake a, a, a grade. I mean, it's, it's, there is a reason why they have as many tournaments as they do on this lake. Um, it, it's just a really great lake for catching big fish. You always have the opportunity of catching a, a lot of good quality fish and it. it doesn't lack for quality. All right, guys, so the whole goal of this is to help you catch more fish. And if you're watching this and you have more insight or something else you can add, you fished this lake before, please leave that in a comment below so we can help as many anglers out as we can. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.